So Alhamdulillah, uh, yesterday we finished the remarkable tafsir of Surah uh, Yasin. Today, inshallah, we're going to start our journey through Surah Rahman, inshallah. Ta'ala. So it's another remarkable surah, and I, I was hoping to get through four ads today. But you know how introductions go, right? So the good introduction will help you appreciate the surah in a, in a more profound way. And the, the amazing thing, and I guess also the difficulty of Surah Rahman, is that it starts off with one amazing first ayah. You know, it's really hard to get past that first ayah, you know? So in any case, inshallah, we'll get into it. The previous surah, so Surah Rahman, uh, one of the amazing virtues of the surah that people commonly maybe know of is that the, it's one hadith, which came that the Prophet Sallallahu called it the Arus al-Qur'an. Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu anhu said that لِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَرُوسِ وَعَرُوسُ الْقُرْآنِ وَعَرُوسُ الْقُرْآنِ Surah Rahman. That for everything has a kind of like, we can describe it as a wedding night. Right? Everything has a wedding night. And the wedding night of the Quran is Surah Rahman. So the hadith is uh, admittedly very weak. Uh, but in terms of what the ulama have done since then, they've always described Surah Rahman as like a wedding night. It's a very beautiful surah. When you hear it, it just, it, it's it's unbelievable, right? Just this one ayah, فَبِيَيْيَا رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Repeated about 31 times in the surah, hits you in such a remarkable way. People love to hear this surah, right? It's a beautiful surah. And so that beauty, mashallah, we're hoping that we can reflect on. We'll get to that ayah, inshallah, when we get there. Obviously, it's a little bit later down in our tafsir. So when we get there, inshallah, we'll explain it and the gems behind that ayah. So this surah comes right after Surah Al-Qamar. Surah Al-Qamar ends with an amazing ayah. في مقعد صدق عند مالك المقتدى That they'll be sitting, uh, 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 in a, they'll be having a seat of truth next to a Malik المقتدى a, a, an all capable and all powerful king, right? They'll be sitting next to an all powerful king, right? They have a, a seat of truthfulness. So the Allah have described that Surah Rahman kind of complements that next ayah. When Allah described him that he's an all powerful, all capable king, you're wondering what kind of king is he? Because right? you can be a king, but you could be a king who's a tyrant. You could be a person who's a ruler, but someone who's aggressive. You could be someone who's angry, right? So Surah Rahman comes to complement that. Allah says, I am a king, but I'm not like the kings of the dunya. I'm not like a worldly king. I'm a merciful, just, loving king, right? That's where the Rahman comes from, right? So the Qamar has amazing stories. The story of the Qamar, if you ever read it, it's about the uh, the beginning is about the splitting of the moon. So this is talking to the Prophet, so says people, right? The people at the time of the Prophet, وسلم, they want to deny the Messenger of Allah, so the Prophet splits the moon before them, right? And then they deny it again. They, when the Prophet splits the moon right before them, he brings the two halves to this side and that side, and then it brings back together. And they say, oh, this is just magic, you know? So Allah Ta'ala brings an entire surah for them to tell them that this is what the people of the past, the same thing that you're doing right now. You know, what a terrible thing you're doing. All right, so Surah Al-Qamar is about, is about the people of Makkah in specific. Surah Rahman is for people in general, okay? Surah Al-Qamar speaks about uh, the criminals and they'll be going to Jahannam. And Surah Al-Rahman will explain what, how, who is a criminal and how Jahannam is. Similarly, in Surah Al-Qamar, Allah talks about a, a muttaqi, a person of taqwa. And Surah Al-Rahman will explain what a muttaqi is and where he's going to go, which is Jannah. Right? So it's almost as if Surah Al-Qamar is a simplified, like it's like a condensed version. And Surah Al-Rahman is explanation of Surah Al-Qamar. It's beautiful how Allah put it together. And the most important thing is that in Surah Al-Qamar, there's also an ayah which is repeated. We have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. Will anyone remember it? Allah is almost he's upset at these people because of the fact that Allah Ta'ala gave them Qur'an, they're not thinking about it. Okay? So what does Allah Ta'ala tell us in Rahman though? Allah says, I've given you so many blessings. How do you deny them? How do you reject them? How do you refuse them? Right? So this is the beautiful connection between these two surahs. So now that we understand the, the connection, now we can continue forward. Right? The first ayah of Surah Rahman is a remarkable ayah. What is the ayah? Ar-Rahman. <laughs> it's literally just Ar-Rahman. And when you understand that every ayah of the Qur'an is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you understand that this also needs to be reflected on before we keep moving forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself as Ar-Rahman. This is Allah's proper name. So let me give you an example. For example, if we said the name Siddiq, who are we talking about? Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu When we say Farooq, who is that? Amr radiallahu anhu. Siddiqa. Aisha radiallahu right? We talk about these names, and then you automatically, even though I just described their title, you understood who the person was. Similarly, Ar-Rahman, Allah's name is Allah. But because he is so well known as Rahman, everyone knows when you say Rahman, who are you talking about? <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his proper name. That's why they said his proper name. Call Allah or call Rahman. It's the same being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves his name. Allah loves his name, became his own name, subhanahu 
Okay, this name is derived, it's, it's one of the ism mubalagha, it's a very big form. We'll get to that inshallah ta'ala. What is the rule of Rahman? What is the root word of Rahman? Rahmah. You're tricking the Mulana. No, that's not. Don't worry. You guys are fasting. You're already tired as it is. I'm not going to trick you guys with any difficult questions here. Make it easy as I can, okay? Rahmah is when you, okay, let me give you the example. If you, if you saw when you left the masjid right now that there was a baby on the ground, what would you instantly do? You pick it up. You would take care of it. You would give it food, check if it's okay, call around, see what's up. And then even if you couldn't find them, what would you do for the next couple of days? You take it home, you provide for it, even though you have no connection whatsoever to this baby. But what happens in your heart automatically? You saw the baby and what happened? It became soft. And now you have to do some ihsan. You start to have some love for the baby. This is what it means, rahmah. That's the word. It is to show compassion and excellence of something that you just love so much. Okay? That's rahmah. Who, is a, who, who out of all creation, Allah that has created as a sign of rahmah in the dunya, it is the mother. The mother is a sign of Allah that has rahmah in the dunya. That Allah that made a mother like how? That this baby that just made her go through such anxiety for nine months and such stress that she just went through. But as soon as she sees the baby, what does she do? She holds on to it and she loves it. No matter how big or how, how, no matter what this baby becomes in the world, the mother still loves the baby. Because no matter how old he becomes, or how old she becomes, 40, 50, 60 mm -hmm. years old, she still, he's still made a beta. He's still my child. Right? This is the rahmah Allah has shown in this one, 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 one creature of his, one creation of Allah, the mother. MashaAllah. So now what does Allah want us to understand? Is that the same way you guys have love for these things. If you saw a baby, you would never leave it alone. The mother loves a child. Allah says, I am Rahman. I have love over everything. Compassion over everything. The word Rahman is in the highest form that you can put in Arabic words. The word, the, the form is called Ism Mubalagha. Ism Mubalagha is used when you want to say the height of something. For example, someone who is thirsty in Arabic, you could say he's Atish. Right? So Atish at means thirst, right? Uh, if you want to say he's extremely thirsty, you say atshan. Okay, you add alif lam at the end. That means a person who's extremely thirsty. Okay, dham an in the Quran, for example, furqan. Furqan is something that doesn't just separate like this. It separates like it rips something in half. That's how it separates, right? So when Allah says he is Rahman, he's not saying I'm giving you a little mercy. I'm going to extend my mercy over everything. The Rahman of Allah encompasses everything, and Allah wants us to remember that and think about that. Al Rahman. This is a sign that the Quran is Allah's word. How so? Allah wants everyone to understand and recognize. Everyone needs to understand this. That Allah says, My mercy is my it's from my kindness, my compassion. I gave you this Quran. Okay? Now let's think about it. This world that we live in is so remarkable. It's an extremely amazing, designed, beautiful world. What a beautiful world that we live in, right? Everyone agrees it's a beautiful world, mashallah. It's an amazing world. It's such a world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that even if we didn't know there was a creator, let's just say you just came into this world. What do you start to see? That there's like a flower and a flower has petals and it has a stem and it has uh, leaves and it has, you know, roots and has all these different pieces, right? And then subhanAllah, when you put water into the ground, then the ground, is, the roots start to absorb it. and starts to bring it to the flower, right? And then what happens is this is an amazing system. What is the system? That the flower starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually it starts to have pollen, right? And so pollen is how it's supposed to spread its seeds to other places. Yet it, the, can the flower move? No. So Allah that made a transporter. It was the bee. The bee will come to the flower. He will take some of the nectar. At the same time, his body will grab some of the pollen. What does the bee do then next? It moves to another flower and then it moves the seeds over. So that way the, flower, the flowers can grow. It's an amazing thing. This is just a flower. What else is there in the world? You know, you look at this entire earth that we're living on, you know, the amazing water cycle that Allah has made on this world, right? We're going to look at, we go even further out into the stars. You're going to see that, you know, there are a lot of meteors and asteroids coming towards earth every day almost. And what do you find that there's an asteroid belt, a belt Allah that has made, or, you know, whatever this creature, this, this world has, right? It's like this belt that protects it from getting asteroids to hit it, right? You go even further than that. You see that, you know, this, it's nice and warm here. And this world is nice and warm. It's like 60 something degrees outside. Where is the warmth coming from? It's coming from a sun that is millions of miles away from us. Right? It's amazing. Like this, and, and the more you go into detail, you start to think about it. And then scientists tell you what? That it's come from a, a one explosion in the beginning of time that exploded and everything came into its positions. Okay? No matter what you explode in life, you put a bomb on something, what happens? Does anything nice come out of an explosion? No. You know what's amazing is that this explosion happened and then everything got into its right spot. Have you ever seen like dominoes, for example? Like, you know, people will put up dominoes and there'd be like a whole bunch of dominoes and then the guy would just hit one of them 
And then when he hits them, they all fall down, and it makes like the picture of like the Empire State Building. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, well, how did you do that? You know, like, how did you do that? You know, my mind is telling me that when I came to this world, and I see that for me, I can make I can make a camera. You can make a camera, but I can never capture what the human eye can capture. Right? That's the reality of it. No matter how much how many good audio systems we have, it can never capture what the ear can do. No matter what is in the world, no matter boats, whatever boats I make, I can never make a camel. These types of things tell me something. What is the thing that I'm learning? Is that there's someone out there who's designed everything. And he died, designed it so meticulously, so properly. And with all the design that he's made in this world, I'm, I'm on the top of everything. I'm the one who can think. I know that I'm unique. I'm special. Because everything around me submits to me. Everything I want, I can do. Right? Yet everything in life is guided. The bee knows what he's doing, right? The plants know what he's doing, right? But what about human beings? He has no idea what he's doing. Now, are you going to tell me that, honestly, this designer, the one who's made everything so precise, so well, you're telling me he's even designed for everyone. But for me, I have no purpose. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. So this is what Allah is saying. Look, I am Rahman. I am merciful. I am so kind to everyone here. That I, I plan for everything they're designed. And so for you, mankind, as well, what did I do? I gave you your design, too, which is the Quran. Okay, this is one way of thinking about it. There's one way of looking at Allah has mercy in the entire universe, everything that he's made. I'm one of those, one, one small portion of that, SubhanAllah. <coughs> Allah has given us the Quran for that. There's a second way of looking at this. What is the second way of looking at this? Something that will humble us. May Allah make it something that will humble us. That when we think about, in, in you know, there are people that have children, right? <coughs> and there are certain people that don't have children. I am I am a child that my parents are able to have a child, right? SubhanAllah, I, 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 had, uh, I had diapers growing up. I have parents to take care of me, right? Some people don't have diapers. Some people don't have parents. People have, sometimes don't have homes. Some people have homes. Some people don't have homes. Some people have food. Some people don't have food, right? And what do you find? That subhanAllah, everything in my life, like I was able to get a degree. I was able to live with my family. I have good friends, everything, right? Everything I had. I had a mother. I had a father. Someone said for these people, they won't have these things. And someone said for me that I will have these things. Now the question is, who's choosing all this stuff for me? I didn't do any of this choice. Did I choose to be a Bengali? Did you guys all choose where you want to come from? Did you all choose all the things? You know, who's choosing all these things for us? And that's the thing that you start to think about. People say it's all random. I said, no, no, randomness is what? When people say it's all random, randomness is just a sign of your ignorance. That's what randomness is, right? Let me give you an example. When you flip a coin, what is the chance it can be heads? 50. What is the chance it can be tails? 50, okay? And you're like, it's always random. It's not random. If I were to make a robot, a robot, I would design it so that way you could flip it and it could weigh the coin and it can tell you what it will be when it flips, right? And it could flip it every time. What will the robot do? 100% of the time, it will know what it will flip, right? Because now it knows. It has the information. Randomness is not there, brothers and sisters in Islam. There's no such thing as random. Don't let any scientist ever tell you that. Randomness for the scientist is a sign of his ignorance. And randomness is only because the person doesn't know. Who has all the information? So there's no such thing as random. Someone is choosing these things to happen. Everything in life is chosen. Now I need to ask myself, who chose all these things for me? Someone has been choosing from the beginning of my life. Someone chose me. I wasn't here one time, now I'm here. Who chose that? There was a being who chose all these things. I want to be able to talk to that being. I know for a fact he's not here because all you, all, everyone here, everything in this world is something of his. He owns it. That's his creation. But I want to talk to him. How can I talk to him? So Allah Ta'ala said, Ar-Rahman, Allah Ta'ala said, the most merciful, the most kind, the compassionate, I taught the Qur'an. So that way you have a chance now to talk to me. What is the Qur'an now? It is the bridge for you to talk to Allah. It's the bridge for you to know Allah. If you want to know Allah, how can you know Him? From the Qur'an. If you want to talk to Allah, how can you talk to Him? From the Qur'an. This same Allah who has been giving me things from the beginning of my life, every breath that I have, is been given by this Rahman. The heart that I have in my chest is from this Rahman. The parents that I give you I have is from this Rahman. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is for you to get an idea. Okay, just give an idea. Allah, Allah divided his mercy into a hundred parts. Okay, and then he took that one part and he divided it over the entire universe from the beginning of time till now. This entire universe has been functioning from this one mercy of Allah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu says, from this one mercy, things love each other, animals have respect for one another, human beings love each other. But my love, my mother's love for me is a piece of a piece of a piece of that mercy. This is the mercy that Allah has divided one portion over this entire universe. And whereas in the, in that's one part, the Prophet said there are 99 parts remaining. Allah, Allah has left that for the hereafter. So that when you need sense, Allah will show this have mercy. Allah, man, that is the sign that Allah says, look, from my mercy is that I want to talk to you. 
from the mercy that you know that this is my book to you, that I want to communicate with you. He taught the Quran, Allah al Quran. This Quran has everything. Ibn Abbas said, he said, if I had lost my, my, my camel, I would find the knowledge within the Quran about how to find my camel. It's the ulama of the past were so people, they were, they were people that actually thought about it. Imam Shafi ta'ala, one time he couldn't find a difficult ruling. So Imam Shafi ta'ala, he opened the Quran and he said, I looked through it for 36 times. I went to the Quran 36 times trying to find that one ruling. SubhanAllah, because they knew that everything is in this book. So Allah had this understanding that Allah did not leave anything in the, you know, except that he mentioned the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do people do now though? They engage in every other kitab. What happens to the book of Allah? It gets dust on the shelf. SubhanAllah, you needed a cure, look in the Quran. You needed happiness, look in the Quran. You needed success, look in the Quran. The Quran has everything that you need. Allah said, I taught the Quran so that way you can be given everything. Okay? Just to give you an idea. Allah the 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 this Allah the said he is Rahman. After saying he is Rahman, he needs to prove that he's Rahman. So in order to prove that he's Rahman, after, after, after all the mercy that Allah can choose from, everything that he has in the creation, everything that he can choose from. You can choose from you know, the flowers, you can choose from the sun, you can choose from the moon. Allah has to give you this next ayah and tell you that this is going to show you about how merciful I can be. So instead of choosing any of these things, what does Allah choose? The Quran. Allah says, just look into this book and you'll find exactly what you need. Allah al-Quran khalaq al-insan. Allah says that he is Rahman. He taught the Quran and he created mankind. Okay, now in your mind, you're telling yourself that khalaq al-insan should have came first. Allah created Allah is the most merciful. He created insan and then he made the, uh, he, he, he taught the Quran. Okay, why is that the case? It's because when you create something, what happens after you make something? You make a product and then after you create the manual. But yeah, Allah mentioned the manual first. Why? Right, so number one, this is the first thing that we talked about. One of the amazing things is what Allah wants to reflect on how great the Quran is. Allah says, before the mankind was created, I made the, I, I, I had put down the words of the Quran so people could have said how important this book is. This is one way of looking at it. The second way is what? Allah says, you are all like, you, you don't understand about how big Allah's kingdom is, right? We're talking about Allah's kingdom in the beginning. How big is Allah's kingdom? People keep thinking that I'm the most important part of this piece from this entire puzzle and everything like that. And whereas in the dunya, in reality, this is just one piece of things that you can see. Allah Ta'ala says that I taught the Quran not to human beings. What was the, who was the first being Allah taught the Quran to? The Prophet Islam, before he was in the dunya, before he was in the world, who was, who was there before everything? The angels, right? Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah Ta'ala says, before you all, Jibreel alayhi salam was there and I taught him the Quran. Don't think of yourselves as so special. Human beings, like they're, they're always thinking they're so important, so, so, so valuable things. Allah says, humble yourself. There was something before you and I used to teach them Quran. And it was Jibreel alayhi salam. They said the angel Jibreel alayhi salam is one of the noble, he's the noblest of all angels. Allah Ta'ala taught him the Quran. And that way he is the, the medium, the middle piece between uh, Allah Ta'ala and creation. Allah Ta'ala sends the angel the message to Jibreel alayhi salam, saying that Jibreel alayhi salam. This is one way of looking at it. And it's a very interesting way, which we'll get into inshallah later in the surah. Allah Ta'ala describes this in a very important word. He says, you're all heavy beings. You're very heavy beings. And what does Allah Ta'ala, so if they're heavy beings, you know, human beings and jinnah, they're heavy beings, right? What is a light being? An angel. An angel is a very light being, right? So Allah Ta'ala, through this, this one part, inshallah Ta'ala, so by it's an introduction, we need a little bit more time. But okay, inshallah. Ta'ala. Through this one part, we're getting an idea from the beginning of the surah that Allah is talking about a light being, like lighter beings, and Allah is going to talk about heavier beings later on. Okay, and in this part of the surah, we're going to understand as well that Allah is going to speak about like things which are beyond, meaning in the heavens, and things which are on the earth as well. And you're going to see that inshallah as we get through the surah. Allah allows us to appreciate the mercy of Allah Rahman. May Allah allows that when we read the surah, inshallah, we, we derive this blessing and happiness from reading the surah.